يا باحثا عن خير صاحب في الحياة صحب بقربه السعادة والنجاة درب المعالي دربهم لم يسلكوا دربا سواه فدربهم درب الدعاء درب المعالي دربهم بسم الله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن تبع هداه أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته all praise is due to Allah alone, and may His peace and blessings be upon the final and last Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Welcome to this episode of your program, The Perfect Character. Some people wonder if we know that the value of the good character is tremendous. How can we then perfect our character? What should we start with? What should we do? And Scholars mention that you need to begin with one of two things. Actions and sayings. That's what constitute the perfect character. One of the scholars, one of the pious predecessors, he said, the good character, achieving the good character is a simple thing. It needs only smiley face and nice words. That's all what you need to do. Act being nice and good words. That's all what it takes to have a good character. And therefore, the first thing you need to ask yourself, how much do I say on daily basis? How many words do I utter every day? Because every single word counts. And you will be asked about every single word on the day of judgment. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in Surah Al-Dhariyat, that every word you utter, there will be two angels writing what you say. It will be either for you or against you on the Day of Judgment. There is no religion, there is no secular system that gave more emphasis for the speech, for the words, than Islam, than the religion of Islam. In Islam, one word could doom you forever, could throw you in hellfire, وَالْعِيَاذُ billah. And on the other hand, one word could elevate your rank, could enter your paradise. The word of Tawheed, the monotheism, to testify that there is no deity worthy of worship except Allah. That's what you have to begin with. Imam al-Bukhari, rahimahullah, concluded his book of Sahih with a beautiful hadith about speech. It is about the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Two words that are heavy in the scale on the day of judgment that are dear to the most merciful that are easy to be uttered on the tongue subhanallah wa bihamdi subhanallah azim so how much of the remembrance of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala do you have on a daily basis at the time of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam aisha radhiyallahu said the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam used to talk slowly so much so that if one wanted to count the words of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he would be able to do so. And the pious predecessors, some of them would count the words from week to week. Week in and week out, they know exactly how many words they said. But in our time, maybe we go back half an hour and we cannot remember what did we say because we said so much. And sometimes we tend to forget that we are held accountable for our words. And therefore, the first step to perfect the good character is to watch our words, to remember that we will be asked about these words, about every single word on the day of judgment. What type of words are we saying? Are they evil words? They will be against us. Or they are good words that they will be for us. And by default, this is a principle rule. Whenever you want to say something, you need to count, you need to go back, you need to pause. Is this going to help me on the day of judgment or no? One of the scholars, Ibn Hazm rahimullah, says, we never saw someone who was destroyed by his silence. Yet we have seen many people 
who were destroyed because of their speech. Therefore, if you are afraid of saying something, be quiet. Silence is always virtue. The only exception, the only time when silence is not an option for the Muslim is when there is falsehood that is spreading around and you know that it is falsehood and you can refute that and you're not saying anything. That's the only time when you are blameworthy if you are not speaking and uttering the truth. And the Prophet ﷺ mentioned that the one who is silent and not saying the word of truth is like the mute devil. That is the only exception. You don't want to be a mute devil when you see falsehood spreading and you're not saying anything. Every time other than that, silence will be a virtue. So you either say the good word as the Prophet ﷺ said, he who believes in Allah and the final day, let him say a good word or let him be quiet. These are the two options you have. However, unfortunately, we see from many people, most of the time, they are saying useless words. They say, well, they will not be against us. And that might be true. But are they for you? Are these words going to vouch? Are they going to help you? No. So why then you say them? On the Day of Judgment in Paradise, there will be only one type of words that will be said by the people of Paradise. So if you wanted to be of those people, you have to start from now by saying only the good words. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned about the people of Paradise that they do not hear there in Paradise. They hear not the evil, the ill speech, nor the useless speech, except the peaceful speech. لا يسمعون فيها لغوا ولا تأثيما إلا قيلا سلاما سلاما That's all what they hear. So therefore, if you wanted to speak, speak the word of truth. Begin with the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Say it as much as you can. Because this one word will be heavier in the scale. It will be heavier than 99 records of bad deeds. And the Prophet ﷺ mentioned that on the Day of Judgment, a man would come with 99 records. Each one of them, each register is as far as the eye could see. And the man would be certain that he is going to go to hellfire. So he will be asked, do you have any good deed? And he would say no. They would tell him no. You have one good deed which will come on a card. And he would say, what will this card do? in front of all these 99 records and he will be told you will not suffer any injustice. This one card, this one sentence that he said with certainty, La ilaha illallah, this will outweigh, this will be heavier in the scale of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala than the 99 records of the bad deeds. Therefore, this is what you begin with. You start with the word of oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You try to reduce your words in general. Try to be quiet. Try to be silent. Because silence is a virtue. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned that Maryam, Mary, peace be upon her, the mother of Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, when she gave birth to Isa alayhi salam, she pledged to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala silence. That was her fasting. Fasting in a sense of abstinence. She was abstaining from talking. I pledged abstinence to Allah, so I will not talk to anybody. Some pious predecessors, they used to do that. Why? Because it's a time of reflection. You don't want to say something and then you regret it. You don't want to see in your record on the Day of Judgment this bad word and this bad word. The Prophet ﷺ was not, he never said a bad word. He never abused anybody verbally, although many people accused him of bad things that were all false. But the Prophet ﷺ never replied back to anyone. So the beginning will be with speech, with the good speech, with saying the word of truth, with uttering the word of truth, the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, remembering that Every word is counting. 
and sometimes words are mightier than sword that's what they say the words they have stronger effect than the swords and we see that from our heritage in the poetry there was a famous duel between two of the famous poets during the Umayyad Caliphate one of them was attacking the other so a third man came intervened and supported one of them against the other so he was attacked back because he was not in the level of those two strong poets so he was told lower your gaze for indeed you are not from that strong tribe nor you are from that strong tribe you are only a shepherd from a small tribe and the man could not take it after a few days he passed away he died why he could not take it subhanallah sometimes you are physically injured but you heal and after your cure it's hardly remembered that you were injured but a word could daunt you forever you could remember words for a long time the prophet ﷺ mentioned that the most thing that will cause people to enter hellfire is the outcome of their tongues and Mu'adh asked the prophet ﷺ, are we held accountable for what we utter with our tongues so the prophet ﷺ told him what is most then than the words of the tongue that will cause people to fall on their faces in hellfire that is the most reason for people to enter hellfire and therefore the prophet ﷺ said he who safeguards what is between his two lips and what is between his two legs he who safeguards this i will guarantee paradise for him so you need to safeguard your tongue uqba ibn amir radiyallahu an he asked the prophet sallallahu about salvation how could it be attained so the prophet sallallahu told him withhold your tongue withhold your tongue only say the word of truth only say the word of truth muslims talk about jihad a lot and today jihad is under attack it's looked at as a violent act however in islam in reality actually the highest level of jihad is to utter the word of truth before a tyrant king that is the greatest level of jihad because when you struggle within yourself when you are able to say the word of truth even though you know that the consequences might be severe then you are able to perform the physical jihad i ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us the ability to perfect our character and to improve our manners i ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us among those who listen to the guidance and follow the best of it hada wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh